I'm Melanie Spanswick, and I'm sitting here on the stage of the illustrious Wigmore Hall here in London, which is this afternoon hosting the Junior Department Piano Festival, which is run by Jack Samuel Pianos. We're looking forward to 20 different performances this afternoon, and all the young players have been selected because they study at the Junior Departments of the four major conservatoires here in London. And that's the Royal Academy of Music, Royal College of Music, Guildhall School of Music and Drama, and Trinity Laban Conservatoire of Music and Dance. And I'm going to be talking to the organiser, the adjudicator, and many of the pianists themselves, and we're going to be able to look forward to some of their performances. I'm here with Terry Lewis, who's the managing director of Jack Samuel Pianos. Oh, thank you for joining me. It's my pleasure. At the Wigmore Hall. I just want to ask you why you started this particular festival competition. It's been going six years now, so what was the inspiration behind it? Well, part of our company ethos is that we like to invest back into the arts. We feel it would be wrong just to take um, the, the profit, as it were. So this is one of the initiatives that we decided to do. We run a senior competition between the four music colleges and the prize for that is a recital here at Wigmore Hall. That's wonderful. I was going to ask you, because you won several things, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. Uh, so yes. This, one, this one sort of germinated from that, and it's a festival, right. so it's not a competition. So we may have the smallest child playing Twinkle Twinkle, um, followed by you know, the largest one playing the Rigoletto paraphrase. Um, it's about how well they perform that particular piece. So it's not a competition at it's all, soft. it's a celebration. And it started six years ago, very small, and gradually it's built and built and built, and then we get a wonderful audience of grandmas and grandpas and, <laughs> and they get a, a, a brochure with a, a program with their photograph on that they can keep forever and it's just it's fabulous mm -hmm. so what other, other things do you run you run a, a competition for slightly older students. yeah for the for the senior ones of the music colleges the four london music colleges and then we have normal sort of examination uh, type repertoire festivals we have two of those a year which is a more standard piano festival yes situation so you feel it's very important for young pianists to get out there playing. This is one of the reasons why you, Absolutely. you do it. Yeah. Well, we, I'm sure, I can speak for you as well, we did lots of it, and it's we less did. and less yes. of it available. So it's, Yes, you can't have yeah. enough practice of it. No, and to get at the Widmore Hall, heavens. I know, very lucky. Well, what fun. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me, Tomoko. It's very kind of you to agree to an interview. How old were you when you first started to play? Um, I was four. And you come from a musical family? Um, no. Not at all? No, my parents don't play musical instruments. So why did you want to play them? What, what inspired you to, to start, do you think? Um, although my parents aren't musicians, um, they like listening to music and I um, they were always listening to music when I was little, so that inspired me inspired to, you to yeah. have a go. And which junior department are you studying at? Um, junior Royal College of Music. And who do you study with? Um, Ian Jones. And so how much do you practice a day, do you think? Um, around two hours on a school day and a bit more in the holidays. And what music do you particularly enjoy playing? Um, I really like all types of music, but probably um, I quite like Chopin. And what are you playing today? Um, I'm playing Bach, Prelude and Fugue in C-sharp major. 
And is this your first time performing at the Wigmore Hall? Um, no, it's actually my third. Your third? Oh, uh, yeah. That's quite a, quite a lot for such a, a young girl. <laughs> so what were the other two performances? Um, what, when, when did you do those? Um, one two years ago and another four years ago. Oh, so you were an old pro. <laughs> well, good luck this afternoon. Thank, Thank you for joining you. me. Thank you. Thank you for joining me, Rebecca, here today. Is this your first time at the Wigmore Hall? Um, it's my second. So when, when, when have you played before here? Um, last year. Oh, really? Yes. And when did you study, start, start studying the piano? Um, I began studying the piano at the age of four. And do you come from a musical family? 
Um, no. <laughs> don't, so it's quite unusual to start so young and not, not come from a musical family, isn't it? So whereabouts are you studying now? Which junior department? Um, the Royal Academy of Music. And who are you studying with? Tessa Nicholson. And how long have you been there? Um, I have been there for five years. That's quite a long time, isn't it? Yeah. What music do you particularly enjoy playing? Um, well, I like um, romantic music, right. um, from especially the romantic era. Um, I also like the Impressionist era as well. That's interesting. And what are you playing for us today? Um, the Lark by Inca Balakari. That's, that, that's, that's a great piece. And um, how much do you practice, truthfully? I practice around three to four hours a day, or maybe five uh, when I have quite time. A lot. And you're hoping to be a professional pianist? Yes. Very good luck with that. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you.
our next pianist, Isaac Atedke. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining me for a chat today. It's okay. Is this your first time playing at the Wigmore Hall? It is, yeah. And when did you start to play the piano? How old were you? I was four and a half. That's quite young, isn't it? And uh, do you come from a musical family? Uh, well, both my sisters play the piano as well, and my dad plays classical guitar. My mother likes to sing, so... Quite a musical family. Yeah. And where are you studying? I'm studying at Royal College. Royal College of Music. And how long have you been studying there? This is my third year. I just started my third year. And who are you studying with? Thalia Myers. Wonderful. And what particular pieces do you enjoy playing? What kind of music? What styles do you like the best? Um, I do enjoy Baroque, but I think my, probably my favourite styles are Spanish, uh, Albeniz that I quite like, and Schubert I really enjoy playing too. And why do you like the Spanish Spanish music? I lived in Spain. Oh, okay. I, I grew up there quite a lot. So. And what are you playing for us this afternoon? I'm playing... Uh, Fier Kleine, oh, the first piece from Fear Kleine Klavierstücke by Liszt. And why did you select that piece? Um, well, it, was, it wasn't my main piece that I played um, for this competition, but it was one of the first pieces that I played after, after some kind of technical remaking when I got into the RCM. Um, so you so particularly enjoy this one? I, I do, it's quite, it's quite significant for me. Um, uh, so it was kind of the first proper piece that I played. So, and yeah. it's be exciting to play it here this afternoon at the Wigmore Hall. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining me. Good luck. Okay. Thank you.
much for joining me today. Is yeah. this your first time at the Wigmore Hall? It is, yes. It's very exciting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. How old were you when you started to play? I was three and a half, four. Which is quite, quite young. Did you come yeah. from a musical family? Um, my dad's parents, actually both of my parents, all my grandparents were music teachers. In so you do? Way, I think. <laughs> yeah, but my parents don't do it as a profession. They and so it, enjoy it. What do, where do you study? I study at the Royal College. And your teacher? My teacher is Lynette Stolting. And how long have you been studying there? I've only been there for um, a year, just since last oh, September. Right. So quite, quite yeah. a new student. Yeah. And what do you particularly enjoy playing? All sorts. I don't have a favourite composer or a period. It's generally just the, the piece that I've learnt recently. I'm and what are you playing today? To I'm playing a piece which nobody's heard of. It's a uh, it's by a South African composer called Jan Zydel Rudolph. Gosh, um, I haven't heard of that, <laughs> yeah. of that composer. No, not many people have. It's really interesting. It's quite modern. And why did you choose? Why did you select it? Um, well, I got access to it because I think well, my piano teacher is from South Africa, and I think she did it in a competition there. So right. you're inspired by that. Yeah, yeah. She suggested it to me, and it's really interesting. The rhythms are quite hard to get your head around, but it's a nice piece. Well, we'll look forward to that. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. lovers, although no one is very musical, I'd say, but yeah. And so where are you, which studio department are you studying at? I'm a junior guild hall. And how long have you been studying there? Oh, a while. I started there when I was nine. Right. And I'm 16 now, so a few it's years. been a while, yeah. And who do you study with? Kasia Borowiak. Okay, and, so, piano. and what do you particularly enjoy playing? What kind of music? Um, a large variety. Um, I particularly like Russian music, but I also love Bach, I love Beethoven, but everything really. And what are you playing this afternoon? This afternoon I'm playing an etude by Scriabin, which is, it's very anguished and big and passionate, and it's, it's wonderful. That sounds very exciting. Yes, it is. And are you hoping to go on a study music professionally, be a yes. pianist? Possibly not a concert pianist, but I think I'm going to go and study music at university first and then possibly do a postgrad in performance. And is this, is this your first time at the Wigmore Hall? It is. Well, I've, 
I've been here as an audience member. <laughs> First time performing. Performer. Yeah, well, very good luck. Thank you. Thank you for Thank joining you very me. Much. <laughs> Thank you. I started playing the piano when I was six years old. Did you come from a musical family? Well, my mum started teaching me the piano. Oh, did she? Right. And then a little bit later I went to the Royal College. And you're there at the junior department now? Yes. And you're studying with? Emily Jeffrey. And how much do you practice? Truthfully. Okay, truthfully. Pro probably five hours a day. That's a lot of practice. Yes. What do you particularly enjoy playing? Um, well, you know, my two favourite composers, if I had to choose two, would probably be Schumann and Beethoven. But I do love playing you know, everything I enjoy playing. And why do you like Schumann and Beethoven so much? I don't know, because I think you have to have so much artistry to play it well. Uh, don't, you can't just breathe through the details. And you're playing some Schumann this afternoon? Yes. What are you playing? I'm playing the Abegg Variations. And Schumann. are you hoping to go on, be a concert pianist? Hopefully. Hopefully, yes. Good luck with that. Thank you very much Thank for joining much. me. Thank you.
I'm here with one of the pianists who is playing this afternoon, Dominic Doubtme. Welcome, thank you very much for, for having a chat with me. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about your background. When did you start playing the piano? Uh, when I was six years old. And do you come from a musical family? Uh, yeah, my mother's side. So, so they, are all, they all play piano yeah. or other instruments? Um, singing, actually. Oh, quite different. Yeah. So um, where do you study? Uh, the Royal College of Music. And you're studying with? Uh, Ian Jones. And how much do you practice? Uh, a good two hours a night and more. I should, I should think more, probably. <laughs> <laughs> what do you enjoy playing, Dominic? Uh, mainly Liszt and Chopin, that kind of era. And what are you playing for us today? Uh, the Rigoletto Paraphrase by Liszt. Fabulous piece. Yeah, it's really good. And so why did you choose that? Um, well, it's just the piece that I'm learning right now. I think it's a fantastic piece. Uh, it really shows off the piano's virtuosity and stuff like that. Yeah. And are you hoping to go on and be a concert pianist? Well, I hope so, yeah. Very good luck. Good Thank luck you. this afternoon as well. Thanks, Thanks for joining me. to welcome David Jones. He's a pianist, teacher, adjudicator, examiner, many, many different hats. And you've been adjudicating for the competition, or that's festival, right. yes, today. That's and why do you think these events are important? Well, this particular event, um, the culmination that we've seen today of um, all the finalists playing at the Wigmore Hall, is such a valuable opportunity for these mm. young pianists. Mm. Um, it doesn't happen with every festival. Usually, um, you're adjudicating a class uh, and your job is to find a winner, a second place, perhaps a couple of highly commended. Yes. Um, but this is so different in that what you're doing is putting them forward to uh, playing in one of the world's foremost venues right. on uh, one of the best pianos in the world. Um, so for them, it's an absolutely invaluable experience, something that they won't be able to replicate elsewhere. Mm. And that's why I think this particular festival is of, of such great value to these young performers. And what were you looking for? What kind of um, qualities were you looking for when you were adjudicating? I can sort of sum it up in um, three particular qualities. Um, I like to think of them as the three C's. There's communication, so I want to hear the young pianist communicating the music, but also, uh, to some extent, I want to find out a little bit about that person through their playing. Yeah. So it's uh, not just observing all the composer's dynamics and markings, uh, bringing the music alive, but in a way in which it contains something of, of their own personality also. Mm, that's so in a good performance, I like to feel I've, I've got to know that player just a little bit with their response to the music. Um, the, other, the second C for me is um, confidence. Mm. So that's evidenced by the way in which they might take the stage, the way in which they walk on. I mean, the first round of the festival actually was done in quite a small venue, right. um, but still I was uh, encouraging them to make use of this fairly small area mm. um, of stage as a stage. So the way that they walk up, uh, the way that they settle themselves before they perform, that's all part of the confidence. But then of course the confidence while playing to take some risks, 
Um, and if things go wrong, uh, you know, virtually every performance contains some uh, small error, maybe yeah, a big sure. error. <laughs> might be a memory lapse, might be a, a split note, something that wasn't planned. Uh, and the way in which that performer then reacts to that is all part of that second uh, C for me, confidence. And the third is control. And that encompasses for me technical control so that, they're, that you can tell that they have a good solid technique and uh, control of all aspects of the music um, of, the, uh, of the particular instrument on the day in that venue. So there might be issues with pedalling um, in, a, in a given venue. Um, or there might be issues um, with the tone that they want to get out of the instrument. Um, that I, I would imagine few of them had, had any complaints today with the Fazio. <laughs> um, but but uh, sometimes one can go to festivals and the instrument might not be doing what that performer particularly wants. So for them to control the tone of the instrument as best they can, uh, that's all part of it. So I guess in a very broad way I'm thinking of those three C's as I'm listening. Yes, yeah, well, you certainly have some mm. wonderful plans. Oh, absolutely. So. Great very selection. high standard. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yes, yes. Thank you very much for joining me. Not at all. Pleasure, Melanie. Thank, Thank you. I'm here with Professor Ruth Nye, um, who is the Professor of Piano at the Royal College of Music and at the Huey Menuhin School. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, we've thoroughly enjoyed this afternoon's performances. Absolutely wonderful, weren't they? What Look, we heard. They really were. As I said when I was speaking on the stage, that I didn't expect the standard to be uniformly so high. Yes. You know, I, I expected that, yes, there'd be some who were, were really outstanding, mm -hmm. and then you'd yeah. have sort of middle of the road a little bit, but, but it was, and what, what I found incredibly engaging was that their love of what they were doing yes. shone through so much, it which was, it was fantastic. They weren't just sitting there like little robots playing no. the piano, you know. No, was, well, they were involved very naturally with the music. They were, yes. And, and it was delightful, really delightful. I, I thought, you know, it's a pity we don't get a lot more sort of press for these sort of things. Yeah. When, when young people are doing good things, things like this, mm. good things, it only seems to get in the papers when it's the opposite. It's, it's very sad. It's sad. It's yeah. very sad. But when you, you mean, you've taught loads of budding pianists, what, what, about, what are you looking for? What kind of artistry do you expect for um, you know, a concert pianist, it's even, even of this age? It's quite important that so many things are developed. Yes. Yes, but, you know, you can, with some that I've had at the Menuhin School from quite young, you can see that they actually know very little about the technique of playing the piano. Mm. But yes. you just have the suspicion, which you hope you're right, you have the suspicion that there is something really special in this child. Yes, because you can, it, as long as their hand is good and as long as they're intelligent, and all you can usually teach the technique, yes. in the, the, the finer points of technique. But if they haven't got that burning flame the musicianship. inside, mm. um, you know, if you say if you say to, to a youngster, well, just play that as though you were doing such and such, you were, you know, in the snow, you were what do you think that you feel? And and they look at you for a while and then they turn around and they play it. <laughs> and you know, you know they've got something then, you know. So, yeah. so, so uh, I think you see, you, you can come come across youngsters that play really well, mm. really well, technically, yeah. uh, technically really well, and you know, nothing the matter, no wrong notes, no nothing. And you sometimes wish there were a wrong note or two. As I say to my students, you know, if you play a wrong note, just play it beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's not the end of the world, you know. As it's long true. as you play it beautifully, and as long as you don't let it fuss you in a performance, you know. Yes. yes. But play it beautifully. It's, it's another note. Play it beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> and if any of um, pianists come to you and say, "How can we develop our careers? What what advice do you give them?" Oh, that's difficult. That it is, is. really <laughs> difficult. Um, and one route, of course, is the way of competitions, mm. which is a mixed blessing, um, but it is a way of life now. And usually they do uh, groom for competitions, but yet people have made big careers without winning competitions, so it's not That's the true. only route. Mm. It's the mechanics of it. The they have to learn to deal with people. They have to be able to speak to people. And I think yes. that's where we can help a lot. Mm. That when we take a group of youngsters for an outside concert somewhere, 
to get them to engage with the audience afterwards. Or to be able, just to be able to speak. Yes, that's so important these it, days. It's isn't very it? important. Presenting yourself. And because you know, if they can't speak and somebody's wanting it, an interest in them, they think, oh, well, there's nothing much there, is there? Yeah. So, so it is important. Yes. It's very important. And I just wish I knew the answer to your question. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I find, you know, there's no, there's no route that you say you have to go down this. No. No, I agree. And you've got to have, you've got to have courage. You've got to have steadfastness, and you, you've got to be willing to hang in there for a long time. Be very persistent, yes. Because some of them that make it early, we never hear of again. That's true. Yeah. So it's a long, long journey. Yeah. But if they have the dedication, if the person has the dedication, that, that sheer necessity to perform and to play the piano usually gets them there. That's right. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank well, you. it's a pleasure. Thank you, indeed.